We are blessed in the presence of the Lord by His Holy Spirit. Tonight, I want to talk about the topic. It will be born to be great. You are born to be great. Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen said like that. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone; the new has come. Let me read it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone; the new has come. I don't know who you really are, and which family background are you from. You can be rich, come from a rich family, or poor family, educated family, or uneducated family. It doesn't really matter. If you, if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Amen. Amen. In John chapter one verse twelve said, "The moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your status has been changed. Your status is you are a child of God. God became your father, and He has a good plan and purpose for your life. Amen. Amen. Those who are born of God, they are sons of God." You know, Jesus came to reveal His Father's will and to fulfill His Father's will on this earth. In John chapter ten, verse ten, said like that, Jesus said, "The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full." The Lord wants you to give you an abundant life. A victorious life. You know there were great people in the Bible. When you study the Word of God, you will see it. At the beginning, they started their life just an ordinary people like you and me. But somehow they met God, they fellowship with God, and they obey God. The ordinary people turn into extraordinary people. Hallelujah! One person with God is majority. Amen. You can see the life of Moses in Exodus chapter three. When he met God, he was in the wilderness, tending his father's-in-law's sheep for forty years. Wilderness is a dry land. And nothing can be grown in that place. The sun will be very hot, hotter than our country, <laughs> I'm sure. And for him, daily routine, going with sheep, feeding the sheep, fellowship with sheep, you know, fellowship with sheep. No one he can talk with. So finally. He almost lost the language. You all know that. But one day he encountered with the Lord by the burning bush. Supernatural encounter. That day, after he hear from God, that day after he obey God, decided to do the will of God, his life. Turn totally, Amen. You all know that his life journey when he、uh, obey with the Lord, he cooperate with the Lord. Supernatural thing took place. Like, you know, the Lord divided the Red Sea, and so on. Everything you you all know the story, right? So, his history totally changed. After he encountered with the Lord, in Daniel chapter eleven, verses thirty-two, said like that. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. 
uh, that is from uh, NIV, but uh, King, King James Version is better. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploit. You know, today many Christians, they know the Lord partially. They worship the Lord, maybe not full heartedly. They worship the Lord with half heartedly. Even though sometimes, you know, we were in the church, we are in the church, our mind, our concentrations, it not on God. Wondering, thinking, you know, it is like many Christians, they say that I was born from the church. I grew up in the church. I am a pastor, son or daughter but they really don't have a personal relationship with God if you never encounter your life with the Lord. Your life will be the same as usual, like Moses. Before he met with God, he was just a shepherd, not boy, man, right? So knowing God personally, hearing the voice of God, and do what the Lord tells you to do will be change your life totally. Hallelujah. If I ask you, you all have your own testimony, how you met with the Lord. Some people, they met with the Lord through their brokenness, through their illness. They cannot pass the exam. They cannot get the uh, uh, interview. You know, they cannot pass the interview. They cannot... Uh, get job, that make us sometimes broken. That make us, our brokenness, you know. Maybe your business went down and you become very broke. And that your disappointment, God's appointment, amen, amen. In that time, most of us, we encounter with God in those times of difficulties or our brokenness. Tonight, I really want to uh, share the man who followed God and who became great in human history. He is, we call a father of faith, Abraham. You know, we cannot underestimate his greatness because his name was mentioned in the Bible 308 times. And he is called the father of faith to the Christians and a father to Jewish people and the Muslim world today. In Acts chapter 7, verse 1 to 3, Abram, was, uh, Abram met with the Lord in Mesopotamia. I would just quote the scripture. We didn't know who brought him to the Lord. Maybe Job, you, you all know that Job, who the Lord really blessed him and had ten children, but the devil envy, make jealous to God and destroy his family. You all know Job. Maybe Job or Shem or Melchizedek, the priest, you know, the high priest, Melchizedek, show a way of salvation to him. Here, I really want to point out someone Someone came and tell you about Jesus. Then you came to know the Lord today. Am I right? Am I right? Maybe your Sunday school teacher, maybe your friend, some even your uncle or auntie, they shared the love of God with you and you came to know the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Today I really encourage you all that you need to tell the love of God to somebody else. Amen? Amen. Because we cannot underestimate to everyone. It can be, he can be a great blessing to many people. Amen? Like we all know that Dr. Yonggi Cho, when he was very sick, a woman, a girl or a woman came with a Bible, gave a New Testament, and he was supposed to die, you know, because in those days, 
TB cannot be cured, so he was lying on bed waiting for his last day. But as he was studying, reading the gospel, the full gospel, the Lord opened his eye and he received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So it is very important that I really encourage you all. You give your gospel track to your friend, or you know a gospel song, or you know you show the love of God. You can show the love of God through your life, through your prayer. Amen. Amen. So Abraham came to know the Lord, and he fellowship with God. He talked with God. Deep fellowship, you know, deep fellowship. And one day the Lord told him to come out from this environment. He was told to leave this heathen land and go to another land that God would show him. God didn't say, "You go that city to that particular place." No, come up. First of all, come up. God always. Say one word. He don't show up the whole, you know, picture, and he just say a word. One word come out. Maybe today you need to come out from your environment. You need to come out from your disappointment. Some people they just disappoint, discourage, depress, or oppress, and finally. They don't want to come to church, and they made a lot of counseling outside. You know, they 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 meet with counselor who can counsel for them. And some people they didn't know how to do, so they were thinking that they will finish their life. No, today you need to come out from your depression. Amen. Amen. If your friends they are sinning all the time, talking bad about people, come out. If you are spending too much your time in front of TV, come out. Amen. Or internet, come out. Amen. If you want to be blessed like Abraham, two hours watching nonsense television program. You fellowship with the Almighty God. That is better, Amen. Because in that place, God will reveal Himself. He will show dreams and visions and purpose of your living, Amen. Like you know, Joseph one night or one night or one day, I don't know, but he dream about his life, the the God given dream. He receive it. That dream kept him. All of his life, Amen, Amen. So, take time to fellowship with God. Hallelujah! Like Abraham, you know, in the Bible, he was he was noted. He is a friend of God. Hallelujah! He is a friend of God. He is close with God. Very dear to God. When the Lord visit to this earth, He visit to Abraham's place, Abraham house. Amen. During this week, I really、uh, talk to myself and I share、uh, this topic about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, where they live in the village of Bethany. That the Lord Jesus visit to the family, and Mary and Martha, they take care of Jesus, right? But Mary was sitting under the feet of Jesus. Martha was busy in the kitchen. She、uh, she was destructive. She worried too much. Maybe she wants to make good bread for Jesus. This kind of bread, you know, bread they can be many design, triangle, square, or topping. Many things, you know. Nowadays, people make many, many good design, you know. So she was so anxious for ah this kind of bread, this kind of taste. If the Lord doesn't, if 
Jesus didn't like. Maybe he, he can eat this. You know, so she was so worried. So busy. Sometimes we Christians, our mind is very busy. We are so destructive. We don't have a sound mind. We are so busy with the matters of the world. Or our own thinking, our own imagination. Maybe you are busy with your own work. But if, if I were Jesus, I agree with him. Like we do, sometimes we do home, uh, home cell, cell group meeting, and the, you know, the family who accept, receive us, if she cook all the time in the kitchen and never show up herself and sitting together with us and she didn't have fellowship with us, what, how, how would you feel? Ah, this is, I don't like. You, you yourself is more important than the food, right? I would say like that. I believe you all agree with me. In the same way, even though Martha was very busy for Jesus, Jesus wants to have fellowship as Mary sat under his feet. So take time. Take your time to spend in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. When you read the Bible, read in the presence of Jesus. And ask questions. Ask Jesus. Sometimes when you read, you don't understand. What did I do? I, I usually do like this. Holy Spirit, guide me. Reveal me, teach me. I don't understand. I pray. Maybe I pray a bit. Maybe I pray in tongues. And I pray, I pray as I was waiting upon the Lord, as why I was studying, reading, and waiting upon the Lord, the scripture became very clear to me. And... I understand the meaning, what the Lord really mean by saying this. Hallelujah. Then I take my time to be quiet in the presence of the Lord and I listen. Okay, I'm learning, I'm studying Mary, Martha, sisters, together with Jesus. What would Jesus say to me? Now I am one of them, you know. I was together, I am one of them, I also in the group. Then I was listening to Jesus. And Jesus talked to me something. Amen? Sometimes even I am preparing someone, I just talk, 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 and the Lord said, you don't listen to me. I am busy like Martha. So we can, you can be busy body, you know, you can be busybody. But tonight the Lord really wants your attention. Your, your focus on Him. Amen. 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 Abraham took his time, personal relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God revealed His plans and purposes for His life. So one day he was told to leave his heathen land and go to another land that that God will show him. At, the, at this point, God was compelling Abraham to take a step of faith. You know, sometimes even when the Lord, uh, when the Lord speaks to us, it is a challenging. Like, resign your job. Oh, how can I live? Go into the full time in the ministry. Oh, who will provide me? Who will give me salary, you know? Who will take care of me? I remember our senior pastor, Sister Nyang, shared her testimony that she was a school teacher in government before she came into the full time in the ministry. So every month she received salary, about maybe in those days 300 plus, you know. And so when she came into the ministry, every, every you know, the, the end of month, she misses her school and the salary. Ah, if I did not 
resign my job as a school teacher. Today, I will be with my, you know, uh, co-workers and drink tea at tea shop and eat some kind of bread and we will have a nice fellowship and conversation and laughing and happy, you know, because when you, when you get money, you will be happy, right? So you are happy day, oh happy day. <laughs> anyway, it is happy day, right? So she was thinking she was missing her school teacher life and the Lord spoke to her. When you work for your government, who support you? Oh, my government support me. So if you work for God, who will support you? Oh God, you will support me. Amen. Amen. If the Lord call you, He will provide you. He will take care of you. Amen. But never do, never do something if you don't hear from Him. Amen. Amen. It is dangerous. So let us read. Uh, God made a promise on him that he would give blessing. Let us read Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. 1 through 9. Huh? Okay, here. You, you all can read together with me. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left, as the Lord had told him, and Lord went with him. Right? Yeah. Abraham was 75 years old. When he set out from Haran, he took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lord, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At the time the Canaanites were in the land, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give you, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord, then Abram set out and continued towards uh, Negev. Maybe my, my pronunciation, my spelling will be different. <laughs> I don't know. You know, in this way, Abram followed God and took a step out of nowhere. He didn't know where, where he was heading. You know, in, just now we read in verse 7, God appeared before him and claimed that he will give him the land of prosperity to all his descendants. He got promises from the Lord. To mark his promise, Abraham built an altar before the Lord and worshipped him. You know, he got a confirmation that God would stand by him in all cases. In all cases, he would partake. Hallelujah. The Lord kept his promise, promises to Abraham as he followed him. If you follow God, all the promises of God are yes and amen to you. Amen. Amen. Life's, life is not uneasy sometimes, ups and downs. Sometimes we, we are in need of money. Sometimes we are in need of something, you know. In those times, we can connect with God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. God will show up who He really to you. He is the Lord who provides all our needs. Amen? According to His riches in glory. And sometimes we are... Um, Maybe you are sick in your body now. Nowadays, many people got flu. I also a little bit, you know, attack flu <laughs> right now. 
But I can stand on the promises of God that He is my healer. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Because He already took care of my, you know, healing. Amen? Hallelujah. He promises. He gave His promises that by His stripes, we, we are healed. We've been healed. And God gave Abraham blessing. I want to uh, point out those blessings. He promised that he would make him a number one great nation. Number two, great name. Number three, great blessing to the nation. You know, there is no doubt on how Abraham was blessed and his descendants were so blessed to become a great nation uh, in today's world. They are Jews, the Jews. You like it or not, they are so blessed. Right? We all know. To the Christians, he is acknowledged to the father of faith. For, for Jewish people, Abraham was their forefather. And also for the Muslim brothers, they also... Abraham is their forefather. So he became a great blessing to the nation through our Lord Jesus Christ, his descendants. Not only he was blessed in physically, he was blessed in spiritually and also in materially. Hallelujah. So in order to get his blessing, let us learn from him. The Lord is calling you to have fellowship with you. Amen? Invite Him as Mary and Mother invite Jesus to their home. But invite, invite doesn't mean, Jesus, you stay there. I am busy. Later I will come and talk to you. I'm so busy, you know that? Nowadays, we, we are very busy. You even cannot understand me sometimes, you know. We make Jesus to be alone and we wait. Uh, we, we make him to wait. He was sitting, sitting and waiting. But tonight I really encourage, take time like Mary to talk with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Maybe you are struggling or striving with your family problems. You try to solve, 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 solve. You talk to your brother, you talk to your mother, father. You are, you, are, you know, you, you want, you are peacemaker in your family, maybe. But the problem is still there. Unhappiness, you know, agreement cannot, um, nobody cannot come into an agreement. Let's say like that. Or you are struggling with your personal affairs or even all the problems you have right now, I want to encourage just leave them behind. Amen? Go through the throne room of Christ. Amen? Have fellowship with Him. Focus on Jesus above all things. Focus on Jesus above all things. If Jesus be the center of your life, everything, everything doesn't matter. The things of the world become, it is like, eh? just nothing. Hallelujah. So be focused on Jesus. Keep your focus on Him above all matters and do not forsake His importance in every aspect of your life. Like if you are walking, you invite Jesus, come to my walking place. Amen. I need, I need you. Amen. Sometimes you can pray to God, Lord, help me. Then I can finish all my work. And even this week, one lady uh, shared her testimony that he was, as she was driving from Yangon to Mandalay 
within six hours with small car. It cannot be, you know. She she is a just a woman, right? Not a man. He she is not a you know like a uh, what's that? Um, how do I say this? She 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 is not driving sport car. She just driving small car. But on the way, she pray to God, Lord, I don't have much time, so you need to help me. So what she said. She drove Yangon to Mandalay six hours. How can that be? No, only the angel of the Lord help her. Hallelujah. So you know, you invite Jesus in your working place. Amen. In your business, in your home. Hallelujah. In your study. Hallelujah. Lord, even in your you know exam. Lord, I cannot remember. <laughs> what should I write? Lord, help me to write the right answer. You know, I still remember when I was in 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 uh, middle school. I was writing um, what is that? Sasi sago in English essay, yeah, essay. I was quite short, and I was finished so early, and. I look around my friends, and they are just writing, writing. You know, they even take another paper because they want to get uh, high marks. You know, so I was thinking, "Oh Lord, help me! I don't know what to write." Then, you know, one song I remember about the fire. Every morning, um, <clears throat> my family they they listen radio and about fire. You know, very good song, very long, a very good song. I remember very very. I mean, I remember everything, so I re- I write it down all the song, <laughs> and in that year, I was I was seven, you know. I I got I got seven from the uh, from the top, you know, like I was the seven uh, who got the high marks in school in that year, so. You know, sometimes the Lord can come and help you in this way, right? How oh, you just remember a song, you know, a very old song, very long song, radio song, and I just write down all the lyrics that I remember about the fire, yeah, fire, yeah, and <laughs> then you know, I think I got distinction. <laughs> so I thank God, you know, you know, it's small things from the small thing. Even when you go market, sometimes. You know the 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 seller, they just they just bullying, they just bullying. One time, I still remember, uh, the old lady she was selling uh, an egg, uh, eggs, a lot of eggs, and it was about to dark. And when I look at her, I feel sorry for her. You know, we have a Jesus heart. So she what she said is, uh, ah, the me. Daughter, I need to go back to other side of the river, and this is the the only six eggs left, and I will give you with discount. Take it all with. In, in those days, uh, how many charges I pay, I don't know. But I thought that I don't like that, you know, the dark eggs. But when I feel sorry for her, I took it all. I feel sorry for her, but she doesn't feel sorry for me. Out of six, four are cannot eat. <laughs> so you know, even when you go to the market, you need you need the guidance of the Holy Spirit, right? What I mean is the small from the small thing to the big thing for the decision. Every step you take, you know, every decision you make, every business. You, every business meeting, everything you do, you think that you are right, you are doing right, but in the sight of God, you are not right. Look right, but you are not right. Amen. So, the right thing to do is, Lord, help me to do the right in the sight of you. Hallelujah. Pray to God like that. Amen. So Abraham, the blessing of Abraham. Let us learn. He was blessed in three different areas, 
spiritually, physically, and materially. Spiritual blessing. Our Lord Jesus Christ was born through the bloodline of Abraham. Through him, we all become the children of God. Hallelujah. Spiritually, he was so blessed. Not only spiritual blessing, he was blessed in his physical body. He and his wife, Sarah, they were barren, right? Sarah was barren, but they got a child in their old age. And he even had another wife when Sarah passed away, he married again. He still can bear six children. His, his body, you know, physically he was blessed or healed. And also, he was so blessed in materially. Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. I can read for you. Abraham had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. In verse 6, the land was not able to, oh, what's that? but the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. It is that Abraham and his nephew Lord. The land was not able to support them, so they, they depart from one another. They separate one another because their positions were so great. Genesis 14:14, 14, 14. when Abraham heard that his relative had been taken captive, he called out the 318 trained men born in his household and went in pursuit as far as. He had 318 trained servants, means that he had his own army. You know, he, is, he has manpower to fight. In Genesis 24, verse 1, Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He provided for them and their families. You know, God is interested in our well-being. He doesn't want you to get saved and go to heaven. Live your life very poor. Just enough Christians. No. As he is a rich God, he is a good father, he is a giver, he did not spare his own son for us all, Right? Along with him, all the blessing, spiritual blessing, materially blessing, along with him, he has a heart to give you with cheerfully. Hallelujah. So, this is very interesting that we are, when we talk about Abraham, how ah, he is a man of faith, who uh, are close with God, who is close with God. A friend of God, in order to receive Abraham's blessing, we need to learn from his life. Amen? Excuse me. We have to lay aside our own plans. You need to make God as your Lord. We Christians, many Christians, we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior but not our Lord. Let Jesus become your Lord tonight. Amen? Every decision you make, everything you do, receive his guidance. Amen? Like Dao Da Yong Kiju said, Holy Spirit is my senior partner. Make him, make God as your senior partner. Amen? In John chapter 10, verse 10 said like that, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it to the full. So Jesus wants you to have life after death, but even more, he wants you to have all the promises given through Abraham to be fulfilled in your entire life. 
You know, the blessing of God is coming through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Those who ever believe in Jesus Christ, by faith, by faith, we receive the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. Amen. So, first of all, I want to point out, come out. Amen. For what? To have fellowship with God. To listen from God. Be a good listener. Amen. Secondly, follow God. We said that, and step by step, He will lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Sometimes we are just sing, just a song. <clears throat> it is a good song, but it is, it is to be pra- it is to practice in our daily life. Amen. <laughs> to follow God, many people they follow their friends. Some people they are led by their circumstances. Pressure, but the Lord wants you to follow Him. You need to be led by Holy Spirit. Amen. Until the Lord didn't say a word, don't do anything. Amen. Just have fellowship with Him and focus on Him. Make Him your Lord. Make Him big in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And build an altar for God. You know, in, in Abraham's life, we can see everywhere he reached. When he settled his tent, he built an altar and had fellowship with God. He worshipped God. Nowadays, many people they celebrate their birthday party and in a very nice, expensive hotel. I had one hotel, one hour, five thousand U.S. dollar, for an event. Many people, you know, they use their their money that they praise themselves or, you know, to use for for their fun. Sometimes we really need to make celebrate Jesus. Amen. I still remember one time our youth pastor called me when he was about to uh, do the youth conference. Nowadays, all the hotels are very expensive, so he was looking around uh, in Yangon. You know, the the cheap cheapest one, cheaper one, and good one. You know. <clears throat> Good transportation, good revenue, you know. So he was looking good hotel, and the location he don't like, and the the place is so far, and the transportation will be very difficult. The toilet is not enough, you know. Some one thing good, one thing no no good, and the conference is going to uh, going to be. Uh, take place in in a in a in a within two weeks time or something like that. So he was praying to God. Sometimes he angry, he angry God. Lord, why am I youth leader? Why am I the one who will take care of about the budget, all this program? You know, sometimes he angry with God, and he the whole night he was praying. And and the Lord talked uh, talk to him. Because in, we usually do a uh, youth conference in Strand, the Strand Hotel. The Strand Hotel was 4,000 USD for the whole day. Huh? So very expensive for three days because it will be very expensive if we do three days. So our budget cannot, <clears throat> cannot be enough. You know, so he was compelling he was fighting with with God and what the Lord told him that am I not worth it am I not worth it to am I not worth it with this hotel 
We said that Strand Hotel very expensive. Am I not worth it? Then he he was he said that he he was crying. Lord, you are worthy of it all. Hallelujah. You are worthy of it all. Then when he shared that <coughs> sentence and when he made announcements that you all, the Lord told me like that. So this is how I decided to rent the Strand Hotel. And that word melt my heart on that day. Oh, you are worthy of it all. Hallelujah. The expensive hotel. God, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then <clears throat> people write it down. Faith promise. We don't have much money, but we believe in God. The Lord will provide all our needs, right? So we write it down. And I remember within, within a week, I can pay the amount that I write it in faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So sometimes, you know, when the Lord tells you something, you just need to obey and step out of faith. Amen. In a human thinking, you are just crazy. You just waste your money. For one day, 4,000 US dollar, you know, that is for your, the whole year salary, something like that. <laughs> Some people, you can say like that. But you know, if the Lord tells you something, even it is like nonsense for the <clears throat> human perspective, just obey it. Amen. Do it. That is, you worship God. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you get something tonight? <laughs> and in that, in that altar, in that place, the place of worship, dreams are made. Heaven comes down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God revealed himself. <clears throat> God revealed his secret to us. Amen. That, that is a very precious moment, holy moment for all of us. Hallelujah. So take time to be holy with the Lord. Amen. So let us continue the, about the descendants of Abraham, how they, how they are blessed today's, in today's world. Even though they are 13 to 14 million people <clears throat> today, but their influence in the world was great, right? All the TV channel, the media, media world, you all know that that I, I take from internet, right? So don't, don't think that I'm very, oh, you know. <laughs> I take from internet. ESPN TV Journal, CNN News, CBS TV Journal, New York Times Journal, NBC Daily News Journal, ABC TV Journals, they are, they are Jews. They control the world's media. And they also have a great influence in the Hollywood film industry. There are 12 main film studios in Hollywood. 25 people own these studios and 21 are Jews. 84% they own in the film industry. Companies very, you know, well-known, Warner Bros, Walt Disney, Universal Studio, 20th Century Fox, Paramount Pictures, and Dream Work Studios, they are, they own by the Jews. Also here, football, f f soccer player here, football club, the owner of famous football club are also Jews like, you know, the Abraham Movich of Chelsea. I don't know if he is still in Chelsea or not. Uh, yeah, The Glazer, Manchester United, because I'm not, nowadays I stop watching all the, <laughs> all the movie or TV, TV series. Randy Lerner of Aston Villa, still she is, he is there. And friends, John and Bayern Munich and Mu Chan, something like that. You know, some of you football player know about it. And famous fashion com companies such as Polo, Gap, Cal Cal Calvin Klein, 
they are Jews. I don't, I don't mention all the, you know, all the names. But you know, it is so obvious that he will surely bless the descendants of Abraham. Not only the Lord wants to bless the Jews, the Lord wants to bless you. Amen. Because the blessing of Abraham, we can receive through our Lord Jesus Christ by faith. Amen. By faith. So that is why the Lord wants you to uh, make comp confession. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, I am healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he has made you rich. He has made you healed. Amen. All the blessings, spiritual blessing, all the promises from the Lord is yes and amen through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yet, there will be some tested as God tested Abraham. He had to offer his son, right, at the altar, very dear to him, the only son he had, the promised son. But God tested him. He obeyed God. He gave his heart to the Lord. And the Lord gave everything to him. Amen. Amen. So in Proverbs, the Lord said, My son, give your heart to me. Amen. Give your heart to me. So tonight, I want to close with a question. Do you really want to be blessed like Abraham? Amen. Let us give our heart to the Lord. Have fellowship with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise up? We don't seek for the blessing, but we seek the one who blesses us. Amen. He is the almighty God who can bless you and who can lead you and guide you. Who can give you the best advice, who can make you, who can show you the right way, the right path. We need him every day. Amen? Amen. Let us sing one song.